Hi guys, it's Jada Mahogany and I am back with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. This is the space where we talk about lipedema, health, lifestyle, and a little bit of fashion and beauty. Now, if you are one of my day ones, welcome back. I miss you guys so much. And we are going to be continuing um, my love series with six cliches to avoid while dating. So if that is something that you want to hear more about, go ahead and stay tuned. Okay, so I know all of you guys at some point um, while dating, it's just certain things that you just don't like in that beginning stage. It's so generic. It's just so like, uh, like boo, boo, tomato, tomato. And you just really want to tell these people like, stop doing that. Like even if me and you don't work, I just, I really don't want you to do that to another person. So I'm just going to put it out there. Like I, I'm just going to put, put it out there. If you see me looking down, I just... I don't want to forget nothing, okay? So the very first one, number one to stop doing while dating is the generic text, okay? The generic, bare minimum, I miss you, good morning, beautiful, good morning, sexy. Like, can we stop? Like, can we stop? And, and I'm, I'm speaking to the adults that are out here dating. Uh, I'm not talking about the teenagers because y'all need to be focused on something else anyways. But the adults who are dating, you know, whatever, you're, you're seeking companionship, whatever. Those generic texts, I'm sorry to tell you, but they're almost like meaningless because they're not thought out. Like they're, they're just, they're just not. Like there's so many other ways that you could do something like that without doing it. Like. You could be maybe eating your breakfast or you know that the person that you're dating loves eggs and you could take a picture and be like, oh, good morning, I'm eating eggs and I just made me think of you or whatever. Like, you know, just something a little more meaningful or if you know like the person that you're dating gets coffee every single morning, you know what I'm saying? Every single morning at the same place, you can call the place, maybe do a phone order for the coffee, pay for the coffee so that, you know, that person has the coffee. Like, there's just so many other things that are so much more meaningful that you can do, okay? So, number two, the lying for no reason. Like, <laughs> the, lie, the lying for no apparent reason. If the person that you're dating says, hey, you want to hang out today? And you're like, oh, no, it's because I have to work. No, damn well, you don't have to work. Like, why didn't you just say, no, like, I don't feel like hanging out today. Like, I'm not in the greatest mood or the greatest headspace to hang out. Like, done. You know, it's not fake. It's not phony. It's not a lie. You know, because then if you lie, then the next day, they're like, oh, how does work? And you're going to slip up and be like, oh, shoot, what are, you, what are you talking about? Now there's a whole argument about why you lied. And there's no, there is no reason to lie to somebody that you don't really necessarily owe anything to like you're not married to them that's not your mom like you know this is somebody that you're casually dating and just tell them the truth like what you got to lie for like okay that okay number three and this is a a big one it's talked about on social media a lot it's talked about amongst the girls the guys a lot gifting and dating in your means okay or out of your means i should say like the cliche of gifting and dating out of your means Date and gift within your means. Stop thinking that in order for someone to know that you are interested in them, you have to put a dollar amount on what you do for them and how you gift for them. Um, everybody's love language is not the same. Someone could want quality time and then another one wants pray, verbal praises. You know, it, it's always different. Everybody does not see the value in a high dollar gift or a high dollar date. Like why take somebody to a steakhouse knowing that um, they're a vegetarian and they may want to go to like a local restaurant that does farm to table. Like you get what I'm saying? It's just, it's really the simple, the simple things like being very intentional when it comes to that goes so much more further and will help your pockets out in the long run if you just pay more attention and just be more mindful. Now, if you can afford the lavish gifts, have at it. But if you know that you're a college student, you're dating, you love this girl, you love this guy, and you're really 
enjoying the companionship, but you know dang or well that you can't afford the the dunks that just came out. Like, sis, sir, like, it's okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. Like, they're going to understand. Trust and believe. They will, if they genuinely like you, they're going to understand. All right? So, number four. Introducing these people to your family way too quickly. And what I mean by that is allowing your family to follow this person on social media. Uh, bringing this person to family functions. And the reason that I said social media first is because here's a for instance, right? These people find your boyfriend or your girlfriend on social media. And you know your girlfriend or your boyfriend post like controversial things then you have the chitter chatter of your family in your ear like why are you dating this person like they're a republican or why are you dating this person um they have a confederate flag i, I don't even know like it's just so many things it's, it's just so so those were just random just random thoughts but there's so many things that could cause um issues at the very beginning before anything really you know, before you really get to know the person because you have given your family access to them when they're not the ones that are dating this person. You are. So kind of keep that to yourself until you feel like I'm ready to show you to the, not to the world, but show introduce you to my family. You know, if you're a family people, that is. Okay? Number five, dating cliches to avoid. The dang on get to know me questionnaire, like, cut it out, y'all. Cut it out. Cut it out. Like, you just getting to know the person. You just, like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? Like, that is so boring. Like, stop that. Ladies, specifically, when you do that, like, you're giving away the sauce and the juice. Way too soon. Like, don't you want this man to court you? Don't don't you want him to get to know you? Don't like you don't have to give it to him all at one time, fellas. You don't have to give it to her all at one time. I don't. I feel like I don't feel like. Well, I don't think females do that as much as guys do that, like the questionnaire thing. But I just I don't like it. Like, how about you take notice of certain things? You know, there's a lot of things on social media. People post pictures of their food. You can. You're paying attention to that. You're paying attention to what she's eating, you know, on there. Like, take her somewhere. Maybe that's your favorite spot. And then, like, that's a conversation that you guys can have over dinner. There's so many other ways to find the answers to these questions other than directly asking the questions, which is so dry and just, like, ugh. So, yeah, there's that. Um, last but not least, and this is a big one and times have changed. So the dynamic of this is just a teach different. Um, but the sex with no obligation and, um, if you're, if you're courting somebody or you're dating somebody and you are genuinely interested in getting to know them as people um the casual sex is just kind of like for what for what for what exactly it 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 makes you very jaded and very confused and very um it just makes things very difficult just in general especially if you know like in the back of your mind, like, me and this person is not, I'm, I'm not really vibing with them. Like, you know in the back of your mind if you're truly vibing with somebody. And if you are not, why are you even doing that? Like, for what? Like, you have no intentions. You know they're not the person for you. You know that maybe this person has kids and you definitely don't want to date somebody who has kids. You know... Um, maybe this person drinks entirely too much and that's not something that you want to put up with. Then why are you going to keep having sex with them? For what? Why? You shouldn't. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you know, like, sex before marriage. Like, that's, that is fine. Like, if you're a Christian, like, of course, you already know the deal with that. But in 2022, let's be 
for real. Not only should we talk about that, but let's talk about using contraceptives at the same time amongst just not having sex with people that you have no intentions on being with. You have no intentions on being with this person. So why, why, for what exactly? There's too many that like, don't stop doing it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. So yep, those are my six um, cliches when dating to avoid. If there are some that you can think of, if there's like certain things that you feel like, oh, I can't stand that, drop those down in the comment section because I really want to just hear like other people's perspectives about that. I know my perspective is not always the most popular one. So yeah, just let me know. How, how do y'all feel about that? What y'all think about that? And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, definitely check out um, the first video that I did for the love series. I'll link that somewhere in this video. And thank you guys so much for staying tuned. And I'll see you guys on the next one.